Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Amen. For the songs that we do sing. Because songs encourage us. Amen. It will encourage you. Uh, amen. I know that's everybody have a testimony where they've been going through some things. Amen. And songs encourage them. Amen. To help make it through. Amen. Especially those old songs. Thank you, Jesus. My God, you know we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Amen. His eye is on the sparrow. Amen. And other hymns like I've had some good days and I've had some hills to climb. Hallelujah. But my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord to your Facebook and YouTube. Amen. Thank God for your visiting with us and joining us. Amen. For our service in the name of Jesus. Amen. We got a faithful brother there. He's always watching us. Amen. God bless you, brother, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to call no names because people are um, sensitive about that. But you know who I'm talking about. Amen. He just told us, praise the Lord. So God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, amen. I'm, um, turn the Bible to James chapter 1. In the name of Jesus, and we're going to start at verse number one in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But that song, amen, amen, uh, I'm running for my life, amen, amen. We sing that song, and it is a true story for us, amen. We're running for our lives, and the world think that we're strange, amen. And so the song say, if anybody asks you, What's the matter with me? You just tell them, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. Hallelujah. Amen. So this song makes me happy. Amen. Because there are times where the world look at us, and they know we're strange. They think we're strange. Amen. But the Bible says... We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And peculiar means a strange people. Amen. We're strange to the world because we don't walk the way that the world walks. Amen. Let's go for the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, that you will bless this service and give me a word, amen, to preach and hallelujah and to, to encourage your people. Hallelujah. My God, I pray that you will put in my mouth a word of knowledge, amen, so that people who may watch this service on the uh, online, amen, and the people who are in this building, that they may have a word of knowledge, hallelujah, and know that there is a God who's beyond the skies that watches over us. Hallelujah. My God, we can sing a song that says, your eye is on the sparrow, and we're glad about it. So if you have eyes on the sparrow, we know that you watch over us. Hallelujah. We thank you. Amen. Watch over us during this service. Amen. Bless this service. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let your anointed fall all over the teaching on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. James chapter number one. As we're going through this, for those who are watching us live, if you have, amen, serve, if you have uh, questions, amen, feel free to put them there on top of the, uh, on the screen there, and we'll try to get to those questions in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're here to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Help you get a better understanding about the Word of God and understand salvation. Before we dive into this, let me let everyone know who, what salvation is. Amen. Salvation is when you obey Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. That says to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is how a person gets saved. Amen. It's through the book of Acts chapter number 2. And verse 38, amen. That is how you get saved and sanctified, amen. Another song we sung tonight was, I'm so glad I'm sanctified. Oh, oh, oh I'm so glad I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost feel by baptized. I'm so glad I'm sanctified. Sanctified means to be set apart. Sanctified means to be clean, amen. 
to be pure. Amen. So in order to be sanctified, to be set apart, you must repent. That means to turn from your unrighteousness. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus to wash away your sins, and you shall receive that gift of the Holy Ghost, and you are sanctified by the word of God and by the spirit of our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 1 and verse number 1. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations. Amen. Divers temptations mean different kinds of temptations. Amen. Different kinds of trials. He said, count it all joy. Hallelujah. Come on and talk to me. Don't be moping and, and, and sad when temptation, when trials come your way. He said, but you count it all joy. That's the opposite of what our body wants to do, right? It's the opposite of what our emotions want to do. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of emotions. Hey, man, I heard a joke today. He <laughs> said, uh, a police officer pulled me over and uh, was writing me a ticket. And the police officer was crying. And uh, the, the person said, why are you crying? And the police officer said, it's a moving violation. <laughs> a moving violation. Amen. If that went over your head, you'll catch it later. You might catch it down the road somewhere. Amen. But the police officer was crying because it was moving him, right? A moving violation. Amen. Anyway, I thought about that when we said I talked about my the emotions. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you are going through many different temptations, you don't have to. People tend to want to get emotional and want to ask God and question God. Why me? Why me? Amen. He said, but count it all joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse, many different temptations. He said, verse 3, because you know something. What do you know? Verse 3, knowing this. Amen. Now, let me, let me go back to verse 2 real quick. Uh, at the end of the word, temptations, diverse temptations. Amen. We notice that there's not a punctuation of a period there, right? There is a colon. Amen. There's a colon there. That lets us know, <clears throat> amen, that... What he's about to say in the next verse or after this has something to do with what he just previously said. Amen. The period means it's the end of a thought. The colon there means that there is more to add to this. So he talks about count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Then he says in verse three to go along with this, he said, knowing this, what do we know? That the trying of our faith worketh patience. The trying of our faith worketh patience. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. When you're going through, God say, I'm just working on you. Amen. When you start to go through different trials and different temptations, he said, I'm just working on your faith. Amen. Just like he tried Abraham's faith. God blessed Abraham with a son, and Abraham waited 25 years for his son. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And what did God tell him to do? He said, go and sacrifice your son. Go sacrifice him. Amen? So he went to sacrifice his son, and he went into the mountain and got all the way to the point where he lifted up the knife about to sacrifice his son to God. And God stopped him and said, Abraham, Abraham, do thy son no harm. Look over in the thicket. There's a ram in the thicket, in the bush. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And he told Abraham, he said, now I know. Amen? See, God will try our faith to see if he really, so that he could prove that you really do believe him. Amen? You really do believe him. He will try your faith. Now, God never tempts anybody with sin, which the Bible will tell us here. He never tempts us with sin, but he will try your faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Never tempt you with sin, 
And the Bible will talk about sin and when we're tempted with sin. Amen? Because that comes from you. When you're tempted with sin, that comes from you. <laughs> Amen. That don't come from God. Don't get it twisted. Amen. Who you somebody you say, get it right, don't get it twisted. I can't remember where that came. Was it Jamie Foxx from the Jamie Foxx show? You get it right and don't get it twisted. <clears throat> Amen. Verse 4. He said, so verse 3 said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. Now, let me talk to you about what patience is. So a lot of times we think about patience and we say patience is when you are like long suffering with someone, right? You're patient with your kids. You're patient with uh, a coworker, amen? You're patient with your manager because they're just getting on your nerves, right? That's what a lot of you think about patience for. So if you think about patience, you say, well, you got to be patient. You can't skip the line. You have to wait your turn. Yes, Walmart got long grocery lines, and you just got to be patient to get through the line. Amen? <laughs> Amen. I hate going to Walmart. I go to a store where I spend a little bit of extra money, and it's just calling and I, got, I ain't got to wait in the line. Amen? There's times I do got to go to Walmart, and then I'm reminded every time I go and see three lines open. They got, they got 25 lines available, and only three open. <laughs> And they got the self-checkout, but the self-checkout be longer than the other lines. My goodness. Amen. But you got to be patient, right? That's what you think about with patience. But let me drop some knowledge on you about what also what patience means. The Greek definition for patience means endurance. Endurance. It means to stick it out. To hang in there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, the trying of your faith worketh patience. What that means is the trying of your faith worketh your sticking it out. Because when you go through trials, yes, it's easy to say, man, I quit this church thing. I quit on God because he ain't making ways for me as quickly as I want him to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you got to be patient. You got to endure. Amen. That's what the Bible says. In your patience, possess what? Ye your souls. What does that mean? That don't mean you waiting in the Walmart line possess your soul. No. What that means is in your endurance, in your sticking it out, in your hanging in there, possess ye your souls. And they that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen? Endure. That's what the scriptures say. They that endure unto the end. That means those who are patient. Amen. The same shall be saved. So he said, the trying of your faith worketh patience. It's working on you. It's working on It ain't there to hurt you, but it's there to work on you. Hallelujah. Now he says, verse 4, but let patience have her perfect work. Let endurance have her perfect work. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means you're going to be complete. You're going to be perfect. That means you're going to be complete. We're complete in him. Amen. Now he says, verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. If you need wisdom, Amen. Well, if you need wisdom, God will give that to you. He said, ask him God. He ain't going to hold that back. Amen. You know why? The book of Proverbs says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Amen. And the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. Amen. So if you need wisdom, that's the beginning. Amen. That's the beginning of knowing God. Amen. Knowledge. The fear of God. Amen. When you need wisdom, you when you have wisdom, you'll fear God. Amen. You will. Amen. The book good, the good book said so. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. He said, you got to ask in faith. Nothing wavering. That means doubting nothing. See, why ask God for something if you still going to doubt? Hmm? Amen. 
Now he's talking about trials makes patience. Right? Let me drop this on you. If you pray for more patience, you're praying for more trouble. Mm -hmm. Because trials makes patience, which is endurance. I had a lady at work. We were trying to have a meeting. We are having a board meeting. Amen. And we kept having so many technology issues. We're trying to do the Zoom call. Um, or it was Microsoft Teams, whatever it was. No, it was Zoom. It was Zoom. We're trying to do the Zoom call. And, they, and, and the Zoom cut out or something. And we got back on. Had to have everybody call back in. Now, we had a, a business meeting, right? Trying to do this board meeting. And they were getting so frustrated with the technology. And then, after all of that, <laughs> there's a, a message that pops up that says, your meeting is ending in five minutes. They said, I just paid it last month. What, what do you mean? I, and I told them, I said, well, if, if you didn't pay it or if, you, if you're just doing the free one, then it's only like a 40-minute time frame or 45-minute time frame. And they said, no, we, we got an account. We paid for it. I said, okay, so it cut out. <laughs> so we had to have everybody call back in. Amen. Out of all the technology issues in that happened. And this lady said, whew, y'all, I need to go somewhere and get me a drink. <laughs> that's what it, see, that's what the world convert to when they have a long day. I need to go sit down on the couch and get me some wine and, and just relax and, and have a drink. So I need to go find a bar somewhere and, and drink. And they know I'm a pastor. They had to look over at me and say, man, I still got some stuff I need to work on. <laughs> As if they're trying to apologize to me for drinking. <laughs> They'll let you know that they know drinking is wrong. <laughs> Amen. But watch this. She said, y'all help me. I just, she said, y'all pray for me. She said, I've been praying for patience, but I just, and I looked at her and I said, Oh, so you the reason we having these issues with technology. And she said, huh? I said, you said you was praying for patience. I said, so this might be a trial that God's sending you through right now to work on your patience. Because in order for your patience to grow, you have to go through some trials. You have to go through some stuff. And she said, oh, oh. so you blaming me for it? I said, I'll just let you know. And everybody's eyes were just open like, Oh, he is right. How are you going to get patience if you don't go through something that's going to work on your patience? That's all God trying to do for us. When you go through trials, God is working on your endurance. Amen. Because there's going to be one day where there's going to be some stuff that you gonna, that might happen. In, I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but there might be some things that might happen in life where it may make you want to quit on God. Amen. And you got to say, nope, I got to stick it out. Amen. If God brought me through last year, he can bring me through this month. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to hang in there. Thank you, Lord. So it says, if any man lack wisdom, we have James chapter 1, verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, freely, and upbraideth the night, and it shall be given him. God won't hold that back from you. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. When you ask in faith, you shouldn't doubt. Wavering means doubting. For he that wavereth, he that doubteth, is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. When you are wavering, amen, you don't know which way you want to go. Amen. You're like a ship without a sail. Amen. Just going about with wherever the world and the wind take you. Amen. But those who are faith, faithful, and got faith, they're rooted and grounded in something. Amen. So the winds blowing and the waves tossing, it's not going to move us off our foundation. It may sway us a little bit like this, but it ain't going to move us off our foundation. Why? We're anchored. We're anchored in Jesus. Hallelujah. Like a tree planted by the waters. <laughs> Y'all see this on the TV. These hurricanes come through on the East Coast and in Florida and all that stuff. On the East Coast. And, 
and, and, and the wind, they be having on, the wind be blowing those trees, and those trees be waving in the wind like this. Right? But that tree, anchored in the ground, right? That wind be blowing a hundred miles per hour, and those leaves, every leaf that came off, the, and the leaves still be on the tree. That's amazing, ain't it? <laughs> the palm looking trees look like the leaves still be on there. That wind be slapping them and and and, and <laughs> Hey man, them, leaves, them trees be like this, waving in the wind. Hey Amen. And when the wind stops, guess what? They get straight back straight up. <laughs> That's how we got to be. Though the storms keep on raging in my life. Hey Amen. Y'all know that song? Hey Amen. I've got an anchor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anchored in Jesus. Hey Amen. We got to stay in there, man. Y'all hang in there. Facebook, YouTube. Y'all hang in there. Don't quit on God. Keep your faith in Him. Amen. You got to keep your faith in God. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how you're going through it. Amen. But make sure you go through with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he said, don't make a shipwreck out of something that God told you to wait on. All right now. Yes, sir. We got to be patient. Got to be patient. Amen. Got to be patient. We got to hang in there. We got to stick it out. We got to endure. Amen. Stick it out. All right, let's look at verse number seven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. You asking, but you doubting? He said, don't think you're going to receive anything from God. Verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. So you're asking God for something, putting forth faith, but then you're doubting that God is going to do it. You're unstable. Amen. You're unstable. Now, doubt will always try to present itself because we're human, right? And there's some things that we ask God for that we like, Ah, oh, this is gonna be tough, but Lord, I need you to do it. Amen. That will present itself, right? Lord, I need 1.2 million right now. <laughs> Amen. You might need that. You might need 1.2 million. Say, well, I don't know where it's gonna come from. Lord, I need 1.2 million, right? I ain't talking about because you want to just spend it, right? Maybe you need it for the church. Amen. Maybe you need it for the church, and maybe the church. Maybe you need the church to, to grow and you got plans for the church, right? And I need 1.2 million to be able to do this, Lord. Bless us with it, right? And right now you look at your account and you say, man, we ain't got nothing in the account right now. But Lord, I got, I, I pray you're going to make a way. Amen. But when you ask that, don't waver. Amen. Believe. Believe that God will do it. Amen. Amen. Believe it. Amen. All right, verse number eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Verse nine, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Amen. The Bible teaches us several areas where we should be humble, right? We should be humble. We shouldn't be high-minded. We shouldn't have pride, amen? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter six, I believe verse 16 uh, through 18, I believe, the Bible talk says, this six things that the Lord hates, yea, and the seventh is an abomination. And one of the things he labeled was a proud look. God does not like a proud look. Amen. Even in the book of Peter, he tells us, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humbleness, right? Not to be high-minded, but to be humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time. Right? Amen. Why does he teach us that? Because a person that's prideful won't pray. Hallelujah. Let me say it there. Let me say that again. A person that has pride won't pray. Amen. Why? Because you're ashamed to ask for stuff. Y'all y'all pride ever been in a way? Your pride been in a way. You know you needed food, but you ain't have no money. But you ain't never had to ask people for nothing ever in your life. 
But now you're at a point in your life where you probably should be asking for something. So you keep your mouth shut because you don't want nobody to know what you're going through. Amen? That's your pride in the way. And it be on the, you be have this urge to just ask for something, but you don't want to ask because you never had to do it before, so it's uncomfortable and uneasy for you. Amen. And so you hold your tongue from asking. Your pride was in the way, so you didn't ask. Same thing when it comes to God. In the book of Peter, he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. That's what the scripture says. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. If you take pride out the way, you don't mind casting, amen, your pride. Upon the Lord. I mean, I'm sorry, not casting your pride. You don't mind. I was trying to read the comments while I was talking. You don't mind cast. You don't mind casting your your cares upon Him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Is that closed mouth? Don't get fed. <laughs> That's an old school phrase right there. Amen. A closed mouth. Don't get fed. That's another scripture. You have not because you what? You ask not. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and ask him. So he says, the man of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse number 10. Now here's a semicolon. So verse 10 has something to do with verse 9, right? Verse 9 says, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Now he has a semicolon. Let's see what verse 10 says. But the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. The Bible says that it's hard for a rich man to make it into heaven. It didn't say it's impossible for a rich man to make it to heaven. But it's hard for a rich man to make it to heaven. Because a lot of rich people are prideful. A lot of rich people have pride. And so... God said, One, the, 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 the low going to be exalted... And the exalted going to be made a beast. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Renee says, because the, as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. Verse 11. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but is with where, what is with where it, the grass. I'm sorry. With where with, with where it. Lord, help the pastor. <laughs> Lord help me. Y'all thought I was perfect, huh? Huh? I got it right though. With me. Amen. But I knew with where it wasn't a word. <laughs> Look at verse 11. Amen. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. Amen. So that so also shall the rich man made away, fade away, in his well, I'm having a hard time reading tonight, y'all. <laughs> so also shall the rich man fade away, not made away, but fade away in his ways. Amen. So what he's talking about is that, you know, having money, people look good with it. Huh? They look good. Thank you, Jesus. They look fly. They look good. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. People look good with their money. They buy the clothes they need. They buy the shoes they need. They buy the jewelry they need. And they flash it. Right? Right? Amen. So he said, just like the flower of the grass. He said, the sun withereth the grass and the flower fadeth away. Amen. It looked good, but it's only for a little while, right? Because that sun is going to cook the grass. That sun is going to burn the flower. Amen. He said the flower's grace, the way that it looks, the way that it uh, 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 exalts itself, 
right? It eventually fades away. He said, that's how the rich man going to be. You look good, but eventually it's going to fade away. Thank you, Jesus. So we got to be humble. Even if you got money, be humble. If you're rich, be humble. Amen. I remember uh, they said, um, I never met the man in person, but I heard a man, uh, Bishop Apostle uh, William Bonner. Amen. They said he was a millionaire, I heard. He was a millionaire. But every time you saw him, amen, he was dressed humble, drove a humble car, right? He probably could have afforded a Mercedes, but didn't buy one. Amen. Always wore just black and what, gray suits and I see him on YouTube sometimes. He's a humble, humble dressed man. But I heard, again, I never met him in person. He's passed away. But I heard he was a millionaire. Amen. Anointed preacher. Apostolic. Baptizing in Jesus' name. In his ministries, growing. People being filled with the Holy Ghost. According to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And had money. But stayed a man of low degree. Amen. That's how we got to be. Thank you, Jesus. That's how we got to be. That's how we should be. Thank you, Jesus. So and then he says, let's see here, verse number 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. If you endure, again, I said patience means to endure, right? Patience means to endure, to stick it out, to hang in there. Your trials work on your patience. Amen. I believe it's the book of Romans chapter 5. It says, knowing this, that the trial, that the, that the trying of our faith worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the grace of God uh, is shed abroad in our hearts. Right? Thank you, Jesus. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Romans chapter 5, and I believe verses 1 through like 8, amen, quotes that. The trying of your faith worketh patience, and patience work experience, and experience worketh hope. How does that work? Patience worketh, the, your trials work your endurance. Your endurance is you sticking it out and hanging in there. If you quit, you don't get the experience, Right? If you quit, you stop going through the experience of walking with God. So you have the trial that works on your patience. You have the patience with your endurance of sticking it out. That works on your experience because when you stick it out, you gain an experience with God. When you gain experience with God, that works on your hope, which is your faith. Amen. That works on your hope, which is your faith. And your hope maketh not ashamed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed is the man that endureth temptations, that stick it out during temptations. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted. Amen. Now look at verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted. So first he was talking about temptations, right? Amen. That's your trials you're going through. Then look at verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Amen. Now this is sinful temptation. Watch what he says. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, right? Neither tempted he any man. So when your faith is being tried, that's one thing. That's a trial. That's a test. But when you're going through sinful temptations, evil temptations, those things not coming from God. Those things are coming from you, the individual, which is your own desires. Amen. Your temptations, your trials that you go through can be God working on your endurance and working on your faith, working on your experience. Amen. With him. But now when you start getting into this evil temptation, that don't come from God. He said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Verse 14, but every man is, is tempted when he is drawn away 
of his own lusts. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Verse 15, James 1 and 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So every person, when he's tempted, is because you're drawn away with your own lust, your own desires, and enticed. Then lust, when it hath conceived, amen. What does conceive mean? It's formed, right? A, a woman conceives a child, right? They have a, a conception date, right? When, when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth. I mean, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Amen? And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Amen? The gift of God is eternal life, but the wages of sin is what? Death. Amen? So there's a payoff for sin. That's why we got to keep ourselves holy and stay this strange people, this peculiar people. Verse 16, do not err, my beloved brother. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It cometh down from the Father of lights. Amen. With whom is no variableness, there's no wavering. Amen. There's no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. Verse 18, and we'll close. Of his own will begat he us. With the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. We God wants us to be holy. He wants mankind to be back to the state where he first formed us. Holy. Amen. Naked and not ashamed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Not literally naked for y'all who go on the deep end. Amen. But no, he wants us to be holy. When he formed Adam. Guess what? Adam was naked, not ashamed, and Adam was holy. Amen. But then there came a time where Adam was, holiness was disrupted. So we need to get back to where mankind was first made, which is being holy and sanctified. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I hope I said something to help you and to encourage you. Amen. If you live in the Kansas City metro area, Feel free to drop by and visit with us. Amen. You can find our address, amen, on our Facebook page and also on our website, newransomjesuschurch.com. Amen. You can also contact us through email at newransomjesuschurch at gmail.com. Amen. Or you can call us by hitting the call button on our Facebook page or reach me at 336-255-5273. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you in Jesus' name.